Now with that heart stopping race to save the life of Houston Astros first base coach Rich Dower, the World Series champion was rushed to the hospital after collapsing at the team's big celebration and ABC's Adrian Bankard is here with more on his miraculous recovery. Good morning to you, Adrian. Good morning to you, Paula. What's better than winning the World Series? Being there to celebrate it. But the odds were against Coach Dower being alive after what seemed to be nothing more than a clumsy fall. Houston Astros first base coach Rick Dower was an integral part of the Astros first World Series win in 56 years, proudly riding in the World Champions Parade. But just hours later, at the winner's reception at City Hall, he suddenly began to stagger, telling another team member he wasn't feeling well. By the time he arrived at the hospital, he was unresponsive, suffering from bleeding on the brain. Doctors told his family he only had a 3% chance for survival. I was scared. And I just prayed. I just said, Lord, please don't take my husband. What no one knew was the night before the parade, Dower had slipped on a wet floor and hit his head. He had no symptoms, not even a headache. And I hit the right side of my head, um, uh, but I didn't feel any pain and I wasn't hurting. So got up the next day and went to the parade. Dower's story similar to other accounts where someone may not feel immediate pain after a fall. Actress Natasha Richardson, she fell Monday. In 2009, actress Natasha Richardson hit her head during a ski accident in Canada and died. She had returned to her hotel room and eventually went to the hospital. The autopsy report shows she died from bleeding into her brain. In Dower's case, Doctors performed a three-hour surgery. I called my three daughters and I said, you need to come to Houston because your dad has just, um, it, it doesn't look good. But miraculously, three days later, Dower opened his eyes. This morning, he says he has zero side effects. I don't have any pain. I, I do not feel confused. I don't have any balance issues. He is a miracle. He's a walking miracle. <laughs> But I do get kind of tired because he keeps telling me he's a miracle, so. <laughs> you won't hear the last of that either. What a story. The Astros team doctor says there was so much blood in his brain. It actually pushed his brain onto the brainstem, which can lead to paralysis and death. Dower thanking all the people who helped get him to the hospital and says God used them to help him live so he can make a difference in someone else's life. And it's as, as if it never happened. I mean, he says he, no side effects. 3% chance of survival. 3% chance of survival. He went home and started vacuuming and sent the video to doctors saying, I'm all right. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Adrian. And uh, now we want to bring in our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jen Ashton, joining us from Boston this morning. Hi there, Dr. Jen. And, Hi, Paula. And this story, and of course, we just mentioned Natasha Richardson's untimely death, both bringing the danger of subdural hematomas to light. But how rare are we are these? You know, it happens. It's not common, but obviously we do see it. It's estimated to happen in five to 25 cases of severe head trauma. Um, that We have to put that into context. There are about 1.7 million traumatic brain injuries in this country every year and about 52,000 deaths attributed to traumatic brain injury. But you have to also look at the risk factors here. The big ones, the trio that we think about when you talk about a subdural hematoma, older age, blood thinning medication mm. and severe head trauma. So as we age, the brain does shrink a little bit. There are veins that cover the surface of the brain when you're on anticoagulation or blood thinners that can increase the risk of bleeding at baseline. And if you jar your head and it hits the inside of the skull, it can tear those veins and give you a subdural. Yeah, and, and as we know, Coach Dower was 65. He was on blood thinning medication, but he said he had slipped and hit his head the night before. Didn't have a headache, so how would right. you know if something like this happened? happened. Well, listen, we don't want to panic people, but take a look at this list of symptoms. There are many symptoms of subdurals. The key is a change in mental status. If you have any of these symptoms after head trauma, you need to seek medical attention immediately. Go to an emergency room, call 911. Obviously, not all of these symptoms mean you have a subdural, but you have to connect the dots and err on the side of caution. Yeah, great advice, and we are just grateful that he is okay and live to tell about it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.